I don't need that. I only need four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't get your summary. Mm-hmm. The final? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure on that. Because I come in and always check to see what I got. Actually, I was missing quite a few from this class. Say Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. That is you, right? Is yeah, pretty sure, right? I have that name down, don't I? I mean, I could get it wrong because I have another Jose in the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you do peer revision on his paper, compare and contrast? Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember because I graded that. Yeah, Jose and Jose. Jose and Jose, yeah. Uh huh. But yeah, I, I actually pay attention to stuff. Isn't that crazy? She pays attention sometimes. Okay. Oh, there's Morton. There's Post. We're looking at the wall. Hey, Dante. I didn't get your final of your summary. It was due last night. Whoops, did that slip your mind? Yes. Okay, well, you need to get it in today, okay? okay. I have wonderful, <laughs> wonderful things going on with my voice, don't I? Mm -hmm. Well, you guys are just going to have to listen to it, okay? okay? That's just how it is, all right? You know what you did, Jose? You turned it into the peer revision comments. You're a doofus. I'm just going to tell you, you're a doofus, okay? I said he didn't turn it in. He's like, ah. now we know why. I don't feel bad. Um, sometimes it's hard to read stuff. I get that. Morning, morning. Post, there's your wall. I got to look at the wall yesterday in my Tuesday, Thursday class and look at the class. It was like interesting to see the wall. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. it's almost like watching paint. Oh, it is. Well, yeah, except there's not even paint on it. But you can see, um, they recommend that you put like a light blue or a light green on the walls, so that if you put white on the walls in an ITV room, it used to be it would just glare. You know, when the when the lights were on, the white walls would glare. 
that would reflect it so much. Um, it's not that big a deal anymore. And maybe when we get the new snow. Now, as soon as I opened up, because I saw, well, there's this peer revision comments. They're late because they were due the day before. And I'm like, he he mentioned that you had done his, okay, or something, something like that. Something, you know, somebody else in the class mentioned you had done theirs, okay. But then I look and I see summary paraphrase final in here, okay. Do you mind? Do you want to go ahead and turn it in again to the right one so that I'll have it in there? Okay, I appreciate that. Congratulations, Okay, you did. Okay, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I I I thought it the syllabus actually shows that you have something due this Friday. You don't have it due. Okay, we're not going to do it. Um, what, this Friday you're supposed to turn in a thesis statement with your points that you're going to analyze for your essay. But I haven't talked about thesis statements, so I'm not, it's not due. Don't panic, okay? Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to work on it over the weekend because that's one of your hand dates is how, hand out is how to do a summary paraphrase, okay? Uh, is it for the paragraph we've been going over? Something? It's for the topic for the argumentative essay. Oh, All right, which is what the summary and paraphrase we're go are going to be applied. You're going to use the information from that, hopefully, on your final paper. So, I actually talked about euthanasia in my nine o'clock class. Okay, so let me go over here and let's just talk about. <coughs> I was outside last night. I went to see the Amy Grant concert at the Buddy Holly Center. That is the most amazing building. It is. The Buddy Holly, uh, yeah, the the big theater in there where they perform. It's just amazing. They have this awesome spiral staircase. Yeah, it's. I actually but, walked up there for a school trip once. Oh, it's. I mean, it's just. It's fantastic. I was on there, my little brother. I was telling you, I was like, that's it. That's where the music died. And yeah. I was like, huh? Well, it didn't literally die right there. Yeah. He actually died in a plane crash somewhere, in east on the east side of the U.S. Okay. Well, at least he gets the idea. Yeah. Hey, he remember that. So remember, at 10:25, we did the peer revision. You submitted your finals, most of you, to the right spot. Today we are going to talk about strategies for argument um, out of the textbook, uh, an apostrophe worksheet handout, but we're also going to go over thesis statements, So, and that will take the 40 minutes. Um, what you need to be doing over the next couple of days is you need to be getting more, doing more research, and part of working over that thesis statement will kind of maybe help you focus what you need to research specifically, okay? And where it says submit thesis and major points, no, we're not doing that. I just would like you to have them on Monday, and I'm going to... I'm going to open up the discussion board, and I'm going to want you to put them in the discussion board on Monday. So bring laptops to class for you guys here. And we don't know where the other two are. Okay. And we'll talk about them and see if they're good, viable thesis statements. Because it's a lot better if I show you other people's than if I just write them. Because it's easy for me to write them. The other thing I'm going to point out, though, is next week, thesis and points work, Okay talking about rebuttal, model essay. On Wednesday, we're actually going to look at the model essay that begins on page 380 in the text, and you're going to be taking a quiz over chapter 16, which is argumentation. You need to have read it. You need to have glanced over it because the quiz is specifically about the student sample essays. So you can have it up when you take the test. A week from Friday, you can have the book open, but you've only got an hour to take it. So if you haven't looked over them, you might not have enough time to pass that. To, to finish the quiz. So don't tell me why I started the quiz and it shut down after. No, you need to have read and have an idea what's going on. And I've already told you the focus is going to be on the student sample essays in there, okay? So to get you ready, because I want you to be successful on the quiz, but I don't expect you to memorize everything about those student essays without being able to go back and look at them, okay? So that's what's happening there. Well, this is a chapter in our uh, textbook? It's a chapter in the textbook. Remember, to get to the textbook, you go to... Oh, there's. No, it's it's no no when you're t when you look on the main page where it says textbook, I know that's a tricky thing to do. It says textbook. You click on that, okay? You click on the link, and it's gonna. I've already got it open, so it's gonna. So I'm not, you know. And then you click view course materials, and then you'll try. Oh, I might as well go ahead and do it. And I just pick. I have all of the books. All of the books for all of my sections show up. So it doesn't matter which one I go into. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's going to probably, is it going to load? Yeah, it's loading into the page where it's at because I'm actually already on it. Mm -hmm. 
Page 367 is strategies for argument. So we're going to re we're just going to go over this very quickly right now. The student essay <coughs> the student essays actually come after it. Needless, I'm, the thing I was going to finish was when I was I was outside last night and the wind was blowing fiercely and there was a lot of dust in it and um, I saw Amy Grant in concert. She made she first made her mark in music in Christian music, contemporary Christian music. Um, she did crossover music in the 90s. Made had a huge hit. She married to Vince Gill, a country singer, um, and she did a she sang songs from the 80s and the 90s and more recent stuff. And she's just you know she's amazing. It was awesome. I needed it because I had a bad day yesterday. Um, and I felt like people were not paying attention to me while I was teaching. So, so it was a good day to, to realize that there's many more important things than teaching English out there. Not that I want y'all to do that. Okay. So post, I hope you're there, even though I, all I can see is your wall. At least I know your building's standing. Okay. So we're now on page 367. We're going to talk about strategies for argument. So here are five strategies. Um, that have to deal with de talking about the controversy with argument because because of the topics you're selecting, there's there have to be two sides. You have to be some for, people for it, people against it. So there's controversy. So it's how you deal with it is what this is. So the first one is to use tactful, courteous language. If in an essay that emphasizes argument, you're attempting to persuade readers, I'm gonna have, see it. I've got it blown up so much that we I lose part of the words. Okay. You can't see this. I will just try to summarize it for you. Basically, watch the language you use. If you use in, uh, intentionally uh, language that's biased against something, you could whoever you're whoever you're trying to present your argument to can be turned off by that. So what it says is stay away from sweeping statements like everybody knows that, or people with any intelligence agree, because you're questioning the smartness of people who are looking at your argument. And so that's a negative thing to do. It says, keep the focus on the issue you're discussing, not the people involved in the debate. So don't say, my opponents. First off, you're not supposed to use first person anyway, okay? So don't say, my opponents. Uh, say that orphanages cost less than foster care, okay? You would say, supporters of orphanages say that it is less expensive than foster care. So watch how you phrase it. Um, and, and yes, if I were doing persuasive, I would probably use more loaded language because I want people to sway to my side. It's like any kind of political race. The big thing happening right now is the, the governor's race in Virginia is up for grabs. They're neck and neck. So Biden's gone there to push for the Democratic candidate. And the Republican candidate, you know, it, it, it's kind of touchy having Trump on your side. So, you know, he, he's walking a fine line on that. Well, it is. You know, you, you just you know he either either people love him or they hate him or they could care less about him. So you know, and the care less and hate are not going to vote for a Republican because of that. Right, so so. Yes, you definitely could, but we don't want to. All right. So be careful about um, you know when you're trying to persuade persuade with someone to vote for you, you obviously use loaded language. Okay. So. Um, so terms like my opponents imply that the argument is between you and anyone who disagrees with you. You don't really want to do that. Argumentations focuses on logic and making claims and supporting them. Okay? So you're you're trying to show them that yes, you can feel that way about that topic, but I have evidence that shows that maybe your side is not correct. So which is much better than saying you're wrong and stupid, right? If I say you're wrong and stupid, you're gonna go, eh, I don't want to talk to you. I could care less what you tell me. And that's what Facebook encourages is that kind of reaction, you know. So the second one is point out common ground. So sometimes you may be dealing with an issue where you have to, there are certain things you're after. And the example they use in here is on, how, on curfews. So if you're arguing that there should be an 11 p.m. Cur curfew uh, for juveniles in your town, did, did O'Donnell have a curfew? Yes, they had a curfew for everybody. It was. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It was 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? Okay, so nobody was supposed to be out. No, you would actually, I've gotten a warning to get a ticket for Being going it? to the store. Oh, gosh. Like it, so it's, and it's still in effect? Okay, so O'Donnell has occurred? On the weekends, it's uh, 12. Okay, so they've, they've expanded a little bit. Okay, so, but you have to, what you want to point out is before going into detail about your proposal, it says here, remind readers who oppose such a curfew that you and they share certain goals. One of the reasons you have curfews is you want to 
um, have a safer city. A safer city means you have safer people, citizens of that town, right? And that's, that's what you're trying to do. The second thing is you want to lower crime rate. Crime does tend to happen in the dark. It happens in the daytime, but there's probably more crime that occurs in the dark, okay? And there's fewer gang-related um, tragedies. And I'll be honest, if you paid any attention to the Lubbock News in the last like uh, gang, it sounds like there's a lot of gang stuff going on, doesn't it? I mean, I said that to my 9 o'clock class, and they're like, huh? I'm like, do you guys not watch the news? I mean, there have been shootings, and I mean, it's just really, you, you can tell there's a lot of gang activity. That kid, or the couple that stole the $2.13 billion or million dollars from all that stuff, uh -huh. that guy that did it, he went to Odom, and like, he lived right behind me. Oh, gosh. There was just a shooting like two days ago. That guy lived across from me. Oh, gosh. Are you glad you're not in Odonnell? Okay, you're in Lubbock where there's even more crime, right? Okay, all right, so we'll go on. So readers are going to be more receptive if you can see that you both want the same goal on whatever you're talking about. And, and with euthanasia, aren't you hoping that, um, that euthanasia allows for a person to, uh, to die in the best manner possible? Yes. Okay, so is, I mean, if you don't know what euthanasia is, euthanasia is when somebody has a debilitating disease, it's going to be very painful. You're going to die. You're not going to survive. You're going to, you are going to die. Um, it could be extremely expensive, it, and it's devastating to the family to have somebody go through that kind of disease. Right. They choose to end their lives when they still have the ability to make that choice. That's what euthanasia is. As well as make sure it doesn't get to the point of where it costs them nothing. Yeah, that's, uh, that is true. And you, uh, having had a husband who's had a stroke, you know, he spent, oh, we're not, we're he spent nine months in hospitals, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's not cheap. But he was never close to death. Okay, I'm lucky about that. You also should acknowledge differing viewpoints. You should not necessarily ignore points of view that conflict with yours. So there are several ways to do it. First, if, if you spot flaws in your opposing argument, that's effective if you can see the opposing argument and say, hey, um, I found out there's something wrong with their argument. It may also help you find flaws in your argument, okay? Second, it gives the impression you're a reasonable person. Um, and remember, women are able to look at multiple sides of an issue. Guys are not quite as likely to do that. That was in that article that we had about uh, um, born to be different, okay? Um, and that was in compare and contrast, okay? So at what point in your essay should you acknowledge opposing viewpoints? They recommend you should do it. They say you can do it in your thesis. I would recommend that you guys not try to, to give the opposing side in your thesis statement, but they give you an example of one, or they give you two. Although some students believe that studying a foreign language is a waste of time, two years of foreign language study should be required of all college graduates. I'm just going to tell you, if you're in the arts and sciences, wherever you go, you're going to have to have two years of a foreign language. Just telling you. Okay. Um, and that, that means if you're going into science, if you want to do research or be a doctor, you've got to have foreign language. doesn't mean you have to be able to speak it. It just means you have to have it and pass it. So here's another example. While local TV newscasts can provide a valuable community resource, too often <coughs> such programs provide mere entertainment at the expense of solid news. I don't find that the Lubbock local stations um, spend as much time on just trying to be kind of chummy and chatty and talk about their lives and stuff. Forgive me. <coughs> Not when I got pulled over the other day. <coughs> oh, really? Yeah, that guy's mad, like, super, super mad. I was like, he scared me. He terrified me. He was, like, screaming at me. He was, like, pointing his finger in my face, like, inside my truck. And I was, like, back up. What did you done wrong? Well, you know how it's, like, the really long entrance, and there's, like, a really big... Well, I was trying to turn. He was over here at the like at the fitness center, <coughs> barely getting into his truck, and I saw him, and I was already stopped. And I go to turn, and he's right here, and I was like, oh, "He went hauling out." Huh. That's crazy. Okay, well, it's good to know we. But but that wasn't South Plains College. That was Reese Technology, wasn't it? Center Police. No, so it was like right here, like. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay, got it. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the, the I'll just say the Reese Technology sign 
right there in the middle. If you're trying, if you come in and you're trying to shoot to come over here, it's hard to see past that sign to see if there's cars coming headed out. You can't see them. So I kind of stop there and peek out. All right. Um, a third. We need to go on, okay? <laughs> a third technique is to use a paragraph within the, within the body of your essay to summarize opposing opinions in greater detail. That's what I recommend. And I recommend that if you're, when you deal with the counter argument, I want you to deal with it. If you can't deal with it, omit it. <coughs> Sorry. Um, put it to the next to last paragraph. Put it right before the conclusion. And we'll come back to that. Um, let's see if there's anything else in this one. This is a long one about. They use gun control as an example. <coughs> when you when appropriate, you can grant the merits of differing viewpoints. You can concede to them certain points that are, are legitimate. You don't have to refute absolutely everything. Um, if you refuse to re admit that what they said is true, then your point your side loses value because of that. <coughs> and their example is that people kids students should not be allowed to use computers to write essays. All I can tell you is I'm not great in handwritten papers. Okay, I'm just telling you. Um, but there's no point, there's nothing that says you can't write it in longhand originally and then put it on a computer. Okay. Rebut differing viewpoints. You do need to be sure if you're doing that, you have to come across it. <coughs> I apologize. I'm going to put a mint in my mouth and see if that helps. A rebuttal can take two different forms. You can first mention all the points raised by the other side and then present your counter argument. Or you can do point and refute, point and refute. Or you can only just do one point and refute it. <coughs> And I think that about, yeah, and then the student essays. So if you don't want to read the whole chapter, the student essays begin on 370 because that's what that quiz will be over the next week. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. <coughs> I got hot, and that's making me cough. I'm buying cough syrup on the way home today, I promise you. Um, Yes, I'm going to be fine. I'm just sending a message to Mr. Rathburn. Yeah. <coughs> I can't talk my own name because I'm coughing. Did you do a lot of choosing at the uh, concert? I sang. And I screamed because it was good. Uh -huh. Oh, awesome. Mateo has been exposed to COVID. Uh, <coughs> yeah. And Morgan's not here either. I mean, Kim Possible. Sorry, I left my notification every time I get a text. Is today the 27th? Yeah. Good. I'm having trouble remembering. Okay. Yes, Sorry. Oh, okay. And my nose is running too at the same time. <laughs> but I'm not running fever. I just have a cough now. Okay, so let's go look at the thesis page, okay? I'm gonna, I actually have to turn it around. All right, so let's talk about how to write a thesis work state, worksheet. And this is something I want you to work on for the next two days. If you get it done, do it in the next two days, you're, you're cool. You're good to go, okay? So how to write a thesis statement worksheet. What is a thesis statement? Let me make it bigger. A thesis statement is one or two sentences. Uh, you notice, please look, I crossed off or two. I want one sentence. So take your pens and pencils and on your copy of this, set, cross out what I've crossed out, okay? Doesn't that make sense? If I'm bothering to tell you I don't want something done away, you need to make notes on it, right? I have a student in that big sophomore class who got a zero on a project because they selected a character that was a minor character in a side and an extra rating that they had. And the assignment, and they said, well, this person was important in the story. It wasn't, and I, I, I copied the assignment where it says, only deal with characters from the text you read, not the side material, not the extra material, you know. So you have to make sure that when the teacher tells you don't do something, you don't do it, okay? It's usually, it, and notice I crossed off usually. 
placed at the end. It is placed at the end of your introduction. Okay? I'm going to make that a little bit smaller so you can see the whole sentence. And the, inter the, the thesis describes the main focus of your essay. Okay? That's basically what it is. It is essential for academic essays and to help you focus yourself in the writing process. It is the main organizing idea for your essay that helps you keep focused and on topic. For your readers, it serves as a roadmap for where you're going to go with your essay. Because what it tells the reader is your stand on the argument and what you're going to, uh, how you're going to support your argument. That's what it tells the reader in the order. It's like when you go to church and the minister says, I'm going to talk about this and, and then says, and I'm going to look at this and this and this. It's the same thing. It's the roadmap so that you know what's going on. So before you get, begin, you need to know what type of essay you're writing. And this gives you analytical, expository, cause and effect, compare and contrast. And look down here where there's a big asterisk. If your instructor has assigned an argumentative position paper, then you will be making a claim about a topic and presenting the arguments based on evidence that supports your claim. So it begins to sound more like debate now when you use the words like claim. But the good news is you don't have to argue with somebody about it. You're just writing it. So your thesis statement will identify your main claim or conclusion about your topic and the main supporting points you will be developing in the body of your essay. So they give you an example of one here. Oh, sorry. I would erase that. I don't, know if it'll, I don't think it'll let me erase it. We'll try. It wouldn't let me erase the other day. Nope. We'll try that. That's a fail right there. So, sorry about my writing. I wrote on it in my 9 o'clock class. Act utilitarianism ultimately fails as a moral theory because the calculation of consequences can be cumbersome. There is no guarantee of justice. And the greater good argument may be used to justify some behaviors that we intuitively would condemn as evil. And then it says, therefore, it cannot always tell us what we are morally required to do. So, you already see I've made changes. But here's the subject. That's why that circle. Act utilitarianism is the subject that you're arguing about. That's the main focus. Fails, there's your stance. Notice it doesn't say, I believe that act utilitarian is a bad moral theory. You don't use first person in this paper. We're writing academically. It has to be very formal. It ultimately fails as a moral theory because a, the calculation of consequences can be cumbersome. That's your first way you're going to talk about it. You're going to analyze it. B, there is no guarantee of justice. And then C, the greater good argument may be used to justify some behaviors that we intuitively would condemn as evil. I do want to point out that that comma is incorrect after and. It should be before the end. Okay? That's an error there. should be a comma right here. I hope I can get that off that document. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's the comma in the list, okay? So you can see, and I'll be honest, when I, when I even went back to grad school, I was never taught how to write a thesis. I had a professor write a thesis on the board for us, and I copied that down, and all I ever did was change the parts of the thesis. That's how I learned to write a thesis. So by stopping and showing you this, I'm hopefully you're getting ahead of the game, okay? So successful thesis statement should be, not that, I'm not trying to say something. Direct, they should be focused. It should tell the reader exactly what your paper about, is about. And notice once again, I crossed off of or two sentence. I changed it in one sentence. I want to see it in one sentence. And if you'll notice I crossed off, therefore it cannot always tell us what, our, what we are morally required to do. Because the statement says it fails. It's not Earlier in the, the previous sentence, it does tell you that it is not what, it, what people want it to be. So maybe if you did LD, that might help you out. I don't know. It should be limited in scope. You should be able to make your case within the limits of your paper. And I'm just telling you right now, it's a 600-word minimum. That's not very many words when you're talking about dealing with argumentative issues. And I, would like, I don't really want to see more than 900 if you stop and think about it, that's 30% more. No, that's 50% more, okay? And I have to grade, um, it's probably down to about 84 now because I'm losing students this week from my high schools, okay? I've lost one from 
one of my Tuesday, Thursday classes dropped yesterday. So um, I have to get all those graded in about five days, and I will be training them out like crap. Yeah, I, you know, I've, I'm not, I've kind of been slow on the, on the compare and contrast because I'm dealing with, uh, I had to finish all that stuff, the big stuff for the um, monster class I have. But I will be flying through stuff as the semester goes. It has to be arguable. You have to have a, you have to deal with an issue that people can argue for or against. And then the last one, you have to have evidence to support your position, okay? Can I have a claim mark out there for it? It cannot be, no, always. We don't, you don't need it. That's just, I mean, that's actually would be better served in the conclusion, in my opinion. The st it tells you the stance ultimately fails as a moral theory. So you don't, this is just giving you a little bit more information. You don't have to say it on this one. That's why I crossed it off, because I want it to be one sentence. This, that one sentence serves as a great statement of what you think about it, because it, because it fails, says morally, ultimately fails as a moral theory. And that's just going, it cannot tell us what we are morally required to do, okay? So thesis statements, please notice I crossed all these off. Uh, it can't be an observation. There's a lot of traffic in Vancouver. That's not, who's going to argue that there's not a lot of traffic in Vancouver? If you're from Vancouver and there's a lot of traffic, you're not going to be the title, Vancouver Traffic Problems, or ask a question. Never, never, never have a thesis statement that is a question. I will, I will tear my hair out. I will, I, will, I will give you a bad grade, I'm just telling you, because I don't know how often I can say I don't like questions. Because this is argumentative, it should take a stand. You can't have a question, but take a stand. A question allows the reader to take a, make a choice. And don't, I had somebody end their compare and contrast with a question. And I was like, no, 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 no. No, never leave a question. Don't ask a question at the end of your essay that you don't answer. It should be obvious. So cross those off. So writing your thesis statement. The first thing you've got to do is read your material. And that's what I'm thinking. Um, I saw some very strange things going on with the drafts of summaries and the paraphrases yesterday. I had somebody that had like five citations, and I was like, no, no, you're only supposed to do one. They've already been doing their research, so they put every citation in there. How do I know which one you're summarizing? You know, I mean, there wasn't a summary. There were five citations, okay? So read your material closely, review your notes, and identify questions or ideas that you may want to write about. So they give you some examples of questions that you might want to write about, and these are more literary in nature. How does the author use foreshadowing in this novel? What purpose does mitosis serve in the lifespan of a cell? Or what does this character's life tell us about human nature? The first one, that's analytical, I'm just going to tell you. This is informative, or it might even be a process, actually, informative. And what does this character's life tell us about human nature? I don't think that's argumentative, I just think that's anal analytical, okay? So, but you're not doing those, you're doing argumentative. So step two is point form answers to your question. So it says brainstorm and write down some general points that express your ideas about possible ways to answer your question. So, and a lot of you, when you send in your topic, you sent me a question. The question didn't tell me your stand on the topic. So, and when you're doing research, you need to know what you don't know. Does that make sense? Yep. I'm glad you think so, because they looked at me like I was crazy at 9 o'clock this morning. Say I'm going to write my essay about the death penalty. I need to keep an eye on the time someone gets through. In other words, you need to research what you're basically Well, doing. one of the things, yeah, you need to do research, because you don't, what, what don't I know about death penalty? Well, right at this point in time, I don't know exactly how much it costs to execute a prisoner who goes through all of the appeals. I don't know what the total cost is if I'm going to write about death penalty. I don't know how much it costs to just keep a prisoner um, in jail for the rest of their lives or his life, her life, whatever, okay? You see, so I, I need to know what I don't know, so I've got to figure out what areas do I need to find out information in so that it's not that you need to know, um, you need to know the information, you need to know what information you're lacking to write the paper. That's what the what. It, but you need to ask what you need to know what you don't know. So. I'm just going to say you could also put yourself in the reader's shoes of them. Uh, for instance, if you don't know it, well, maybe they might find it a little yeah. more interesting. Yeah. Well, that's true. But again, 
this is argumentative, so I'm not as concerned with making it interesting for the reader as doing what you're supposed to do in an argumentative essay. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, that making it interesting is a, is a subjective thing. That so when it comes to grading, somebody who can do that gets a better grade. But somebody who does what I've told them to do is going to get a passing grade, you know, in the 80s most likely, okay? So that's what differentiates it. So you need to know what questions to ask. So then it tells you over here to combine steps one and two. So figure out what you're going to – we know what our topics are. Now you've got to figure out – and I'm going to tell you right off the top, one, a big – issue in a lot of a lot of your topics is going to be the economics, the money involved in the situation. How much does it cost for a person who's suffering from debilitating, you know, how much is insurance paying, how much is the family going to have to pay if, because of this disease? See, there's a lot of financial issues with that. There's financial issues with the death penalty. Let's say, what are you doing? Four and eight. Four and eight. So to, are you for it or against it? I'm against it. So, and how much money do we send to foreign countries? Do they send us any? Do they ever repay us? As far as I know, they don't. And then it goes back to, are we their allies? Are they our allies? What's going to happen after we have them? So, yeah. So that, it's a good topic because what, how, you know, so with your topics, what are the costs involved in this particular topic? Does it affect um, people's attitudes toward whether they're for or against it? So that's one of the things you have to consider. Money's always going to be involved. Even in Kirkies, money's involved. Because if you've got a Kirkie, somebody's got to enforce it, which means you've got to have somebody out there driving the streets to make sure people aren't out. Now, that's not a big deal, no, Donna, because there aren't that many streets. Thirteen in one car. That's it, okay? All right, so now it says turn the question in your best answers. So they said write down a question. You may not use a question as your thesis. It says turn the question in your best answers into a combination sentence that tells the reader what your paper is about. So depending on the complexity of the topic, a thesis may be a single point statement or it may have three or more points. I'm going to be honest, if you've only got one point, you're going to have trouble getting 600 words, unless it's a really massive one point, okay? So you're going to need at least two, two things that are, support your stance on the issue, okay? All right, so now you've got this wonderfully switched paper. Here we go. So um, this is what I want you to work on over the next couple of days and the weekend. What is the topic of your essay? Euthanasia should be, are you for it or against it? Uh, for it. He's for it, okay. So uh, euthanasia should be legal in the United States. That's your topic, okay. So think of the questions, and it's not just one you want to answer about your topic, okay. There's a lot of questions out there. Brainstorm some possible answers to your question. Do some research, okay, if that will help you, and combine your best answers and your questions into a thesis statement. And if you'll notice when we were looking at some of these topics and opposing viewpoints, if you got in certain articles, they gave you your points. You can just use their points. Rephrase them. Don't plagiarize totally, you know. But they get, a lot of times, if you get in the right, arg, uh, right articles or viewpoints in opposing viewpoints, they will give you. I mean, all you have to do is look at the titles on death penalty. It is um, unethical. It's, uh, it's un, unequitable. It's not administered equitably. And it uh, doesn't deter crime. And I haven't even touched money. Okay. So I don't even have to go with that topic. I could write about those three. And there's tons of stuff in, in opposing viewpoints on death penalty. So if you're stuck, you go to death penalty. All right. So that's it. So now we're going to talk about the ever fun thing called apostrophes, okay? Oh, no. Yeah, you got, you, you got your apostrophe handouts here on, on the tables with you, okay? Okay, let me open this up. Um, we pro what we're gonna, I'm going to go over the points, and then we'll probably have to work them together. Yeah. I had a little bit more time. Like well, this is going to solve your problems with apostrophes, Dante, okay? So, and this test is about two weeks away. Uh, two weeks away. Yeah, about two weeks away. It'll be right before th Thanksgiving, maybe two, a week and a half before Thanksgiving. And I already know my high schools are not going to be in attendance. On the Monday of the week of Thanksgiving, I will be here. If you want to bring in your drafts of your essays for me to look at, you're welcome to do that, and I will one on one with you. Okay. Um, then, then you don't have to see a tutor because, like Zach, I have at nine o'clock. He he was going. Can you get all the stuff up because I need to. I, he has to work ahead because of his job. And I said, by the way, on that Monday, you come to class, bring your essay, and we can work it together. So the apostrophe. Um, there are an apostrophe has three uses. 
And you'll notice none of them say that they're used in place of quotation marks, okay? I'm just going to throw that out there. The apostrophe is used to form the possessives of nouns, to show the emissions of letters and contractions, and to form plurals of le numbers, letters, and symbols. Okay? So, the possessive apostrophe. The apostrophe shows that one thing is owned by another. So, what they're saying in here is, to determine if you have a possessive apostrophe, you can switch the sentence around instead of saying, you know, uh, Mrs. Thompson's computer. I could say the computer of Mrs. Thompson. If it makes sense when you say that, it should be then Mrs. Thompson should be possessive. That's how they're saying to do that. Mm -hmm. So they give you the example: the dow's the dow's bow, the dog's bow, the bow of the dog, the boss's report, report of the boss. There's an interesting point underneath that. If the word is singular and the already ends in an S, you can still add another S to make that word possessive, as in this sentence. The bosses, if you just say the boss report and put an apostrophe, it doesn't sound quite right. I'm going to be honest. So you need the apostrophe S on that one. So don't just think you can always just automatically just put an apostrophe, okay? And not an S when you've got something like that. But then they talk about the dog's vowels, the vowels of the dogs. So... If your word is plural, which dogs is, then you do not need to add an extra S. You just put the apostrophe after the original S, as in sentence three. Because you wouldn't go, the dogs, ziz, bowels. And notice how it said, the dogs, bowels. Because that's plural. Most of us only have one, I have one organ that deals with our bowels, okay? So, a lot of times when you're trying to determine if something is singular or possessive, singular or plural possessive, you need to look at what's being possessed. And I don't mean by an evil demon, okay? Even though we're coming up really close to Halloween, okay? Um, now the next example, my father-in-law's car is quite expensive. For compound nouns, make the last word in the group possessive. So you're not going to say my father's in law car, my father-in-law's car, my future mother-in-law's grandbaby. Okay, um, so you always make the last word. So put a little asterisk by that one, okay? Angelus and Tommy's papers were really well done. To show individual possession by two or more owners, make each noun possessive. Our, the clue that when you have multiple people owning, um, owning something, notice how it says papers. So that means there's more than one paper. So that's why it is Angelus and Tommy's papers were really well done. We're, we can tell that it has to be, they both turned in papers. They didn't turn in one paper together. The next one shows you how to show joint possession. Angela and Tommy's house is lovely. So we know that you only put the possessive on the last one when you're showing joint possession. So if it had said houses, we'd have to go back and do Angela apostrophe S, okay? And the possessive form of personal pronouns do not need apostrophes. So the word... The word yours, his, hers, it's, ours, theirs, do not need apostrophes. They're already possessive. That's, that's just how it is. So when you're, when you're taking the test, if you have this page, you shouldn't get it wrong. But, but you have I'm, I think that's, I'm so nice about that. I don't understand what the problem is. Okay. All right. So omission of letters and contractions. So they give you a list. That type of apostrophe indicates that letters or parts of words are missing. So it is, it has, it, I would, I'd, I will not. You guys can see all of those, but I want to talk about this one right down here, would have, would have, okay, not would of. This is, I see this error frequently in student writing, okay. They will go, would, I would have gone to school that day, but I was sick. I should have gone to school that day. It's not just would have. It's would, should, and could. I could have bought, got, bought a new car if I'd gotten my paycheck. Okay? So what has happened is that the contraction has made us hear. We hear would have. Sounds like would have. But it actually should be. would be W-O-U-L-D, would have, okay, like that. I had to put my coat on. That air conditioner came on and made it cold, okay? So would have, should have, could have. So don't, uh, Lord only knows where Post went. Okay, I, I can't, you know. Post disappeared. Let me type that in. 
Uh-oh. Are you just talking to go after the final, final green screen and then it goes? Hmm? What? I'm being funny and saying that it was once a green wall, now it's a blue wall, and now we got... Oh, okay. Now I'm with you. Let's see. Let me I type this in. Um... Okay. I wrote lost pissed. Okay, that's not what I'm going to write. They might think I was pissed about something. Okay. All right. All right. So, just to go on for Morton, you guys at Morton, would have, could have, should have. Okay. So, you need to be careful. I mean, and that's what we do in Texas. Oh, crap. There. Oh, that was a lot smarter. Okay. Make sure it's not doing it again. Okay. So the book was all. I mean, I need to get over here so we can get through this. Um, be careful to distinguish between it is and ITS. ITS is always possessive. Okay. The car's radiator. Like its radiator was broken. That's possessive. And does that one use the apostrophe as well? No. No, I wouldn't say it is radiator broken. Uh, it is radiator is broken. See how yeah, that doesn't make sense. So if you're unsure which one you've used, read it out loud. It is radiator is broken. Doesn't make sense. So it should be ITS. That that's it. Oh, there we go. Glad you're back. Okay. So the way I'm thinking of it is ITS apostrophe. No. Oh. There's no apostrophe for possessive. Is. No, I'm just saying that part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um, the book was old and tatter. It's finding was almost falling off. Sometimes it's profitable. So when you see if on the test you see sometimes it's profitable to buy old books. You need to read it as the what it's saying. Sometimes it is profitable. So the contraction it should have a another word after it that wouldn't be. Profitable is not going to be something you possess. Profit can be possessed, but not profitable. Okay. So now the other is plurals of numbers, letters, and symbols. Use an apostrophe and S to make the plural of numbers, letters, and symbols. <clears throat> Many 80s and 90s were scored on the test. Note that an apostrophe is not needed when indicating years. Cars of the 90s were nondescript. Fashion of the 80s were very unusual. So if somebody says... Um, World War took place in the 1940s. It would just be 1940S. And trust me, I'm going to see people get that wrong. I see it all the time. And that's why apostrophes drive me crazy. Because this page tells you everything you need to know on it. So if it's kind of related to like years? If it's related to years, you don't put an apostrophe on it. Okay. If it's if I'm talking about like, the grades. Like just the basic number, then it's just no answer. No, if it's a number, yeah, yeah. If it's if it's a number, you put the apostrophe on it. And many 80s and 90s, okay. I'm always happy when the students I tutor make A's, A apostrophe S, and the students' paper use many ampersands instead of the actual word and. Okay, so that's it. So now we go over, and you've got 20 sentences. Um, we're down to seven minutes. I'm just going to go over them and tell you if they're correct or incorrect, so we can get it done quickly. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at the first one. The plant sleeves were all yellow and brown. Um, this is an this is a difficult sentence because we're not sure how many plants there are. But a lot of times, the is a word that can sing that can signal singular something is singular. So this should be P L A N T apostrophe S. So it's incorrect. And make the correction so you have that. Make that correction on it so you have it so you can use both sheets when you take the test. So if you need, because just like math, you know, if you have examples, it makes it that much easier to get it right. The clock's hand seemed to move slower as class continued. That's correct. It's one clock. The president and chief's car was waiting outside the building. Um, the rule says when you have a compound noun, you always make the last word possessive, so it should be C-H-I-E-F apostrophe S. And you only ever have one president and chief at a time in the U.S. You don't have multiple, which would give us an answer on the next one. Sorry, I'm eating the minute. The president's and chief's bodyguard was in the car. 
You need to delete that S after president because you're not going to have president, multiple presidents in chief, okay? And again, you need to make it apostrophe F apostrophe S because it is the bodyguard of, of the president, okay? I would have gotten to the show, but it was plain too late. That one is correct on five. James's book bag was found in the library. I, I can see where that one's going. Yeah, you're going to take off one of those S's. The apostrophe still goes after it. It's like if you've ever, um, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus tears. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's one of those. Um, you can say James's. It would, doesn't bother me as much. But you just need to put the, you don't want to put the second S, it just makes it too hard. I have two boys named Joe in my class. Both Joe's last names start with P. Okay. The word both is not singular, it's plural. So this is incorrect. It should be J-O-E-S apostrophe. But I wouldn't say Joe's is, both Joe's last names, I would just say both Joe's last names. And sometimes that extra S, it depends on how it sounds, to be honest, when you're speaking. I wish John's grades were better. That one's incorrect. It should be John apostrophe S. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, right? Outside, we should go for a run. Um, that is incorrect because it is a beautiful day, so it should be the contraction, IT apostrophe S. My children's toys are scattered all over the house. Children is plural. So to make it possessive, you go in apostrophe S. The email addresses were all correct because they omitted the at. There needs to be at apostrophe S on that one. The man was surprised when the dog's collar broke because its material was supposed to be quite sturdy. Okay, I'm, I have to look at the sentence because I need to know if we're talking about one dog or many dogs. Because there's only one collar, it's going to be a singular dog, so it's going to be a D-O-G apostrophe S. Don't see where I'm going with that? But I have to look at what's being possessed. The weatherman said it's going to rain. What do you think, Dante? Mm -hmm. I tell, what did I tell you when you see ITS? You should always read the sentence, and, but say it is. It is. Yes. So would you go, the weatherman said it is going to rain? Does that make sense? Yes. Then it needs the apostrophe S. Yes, it does. Okay. See how Your conference easy. is when scheduled to end ITS, in two minutes. If it makes sense, if you read it as it is, then it should, have the, it should be the contraction. Otherwise, it shouldn't be the contraction. Mm -hmm. The weatherman said, well, it doesn't work. The robot said its parts were rusty. I wouldn't say the robot said it is parts were rusty, right? See how that doesn't sound right. Lisa and Eddie's, Lisa's and Eddie's cat was very shy. All right, we're dealing with what's being possessed. That's cat. It's only singular. So when you have a singular item being possessed by two individuals, you only... Take off the S, cross off the S on Lisa's, and make it Eddie apostrophe S. And that shows that both of them own the cat together. Toby's and Juan's. And you said uh, S apostrophe? No, it's E apostrophe S. Toby's and Juan's trucks were both very large. So when I look at what's being possessed, I see trucks. It's plural. So it should be Toby apostrophe S and Juan's. It's correct. Toby and Juan's chemistry class was difficult to study for. Oh, they don't have multiple chemistry classes at O'Donnell, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's only one item being possessed, then you only do possessive on the last, on the paired people. So it's only going to be Toby and Juan's class, but they both go to chemistry together, okay? And I find this sentence funny. My typewriter key always sticks. If you said my keyboard key always sticks, it won't type any G's. We're talking about the letter, so it should be G apostrophe S at the end. It's incorrect. On 18, she wasn't allowed to go to the party due to her poor grades. You don't ever put the apostrophe after the word with the contraction. It goes between the N and the T where you're omitting the letters. Okay, right in there. The actor's Your conference is, is now stylish. over. Goodbye. Uh, I see. I look at wardrobe, and I know wardrobe is singular, so actors has to be singular. So it's going to be A-C-T-O-R apostrophe S. The last one's a little more complicated. The producer's parking spaces were all at the front of the studio. So I'm looking at, it's not parking that's being possessed, it's spaces. And spaces is plural. 
Well, most producers don't get multiple places to park their cars at the studios. So producers has to be plural, so it's going to be P-R-O-D-U-C-E-R-S apostrophe. It's a plural possessive. You wouldn't say producers, producers. You know, that doesn't make sense. You'd have to put an almost extra er in there. So when you take this test, make sure you have that out so that you can make a good grade on it, okay? So nothing's due this week. All I want you working on are I want you doing, they're gone. I want you working on your thesis statements and bring them to class Monday and your computers, okay? And what was that one for number? Just read, tell me the. Uh, number 15. Read it to me. Uh, Toby and Juan trucks were both very. How many, how many things are being possessed? One. No. Look at the sentence. Toby's and Wands, what word comes after that? Trucks. How many is that? Is that one or more? More. So it's plural. So it's plural. So it has to be both of those have to be possessive. Because they don't own the truck together. Fair enough. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. Take it easy, Jose. I'm not still here. No, I'm not still there. Okay, I got it. I can see why you hate apostrophes. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, because people just, it's, we make it harder than it is. Apostrophes really, the majority of the time, are about possessing things, okay? can't get my facilitator posted to give me a straight answer. All I want to know is what time, and while I have all of my students, since I have two seconds for those, that's all I'm trying to figure out. And he said something about, she wants you to keep them the whole time because of anatomy class. It doesn't make sense to me. All righty. Okay, you need to get that summary in, all righty? Don't wait till tomorrow. It's 10 points off already today. Okay. So the good news is, is that if you, I don't have to grade papers.